breaking news, Nigerians. Wike moves to prevent the persecution of alleged loyalists linked to the river state violence. You can imagine. This is unbelievable. The former governor of River State, who is the current minister of the FCT, Nyezon Wike, has disclosed that he has instructed his lawyers to file a lawsuit against the panel of inquiry established by Governor Sim Fubara. Wike made this revelation during an appearance on Channels TV's Politics Today on Tuesday night. And according to Wike, the governor said that it is the handiwork of his political opponent, knowing them. That why are they setting up this panel of inquiry when you know them? That all you need to do is to get the police to arrest them. So why setting up this panel of inquiry? And this lawsuit comes in response to Fubara's establishment of a judicial commission of inquiry to investigate the violence that marred the recent local government elections in River State. It was reported that violence which occurred on Monday was allegedly carried out by the loyalist of Winke, who has been at odds with Fubara. And these attacks resulted in the destruction of three local government secretaries. In reaction, Fubara had pledged to take action against those responsible, that he will not stand by and watch political talks wreak havoc in River State, that those behind these attacks will surely be held accountable for their actions and their atrocities. Fubara declared while swearing in four new commissioners at the government house in Port Harcourt on Tuesday. And then Governor Fubra noted that he's setting up this panel of uh, you know, inquiry to make sure that they will not go unpunished. And he will work with security agencies to uncover those responsible and to ensure they face justice. Meanwhile, in a statement by the Office of the Secretary to the River State Government, Dr. Timmy Dangogo, on Tuesday, he noted that the Judicial Commission is established pursued down to Section 21 of the Commissions of Inquiry Law to investigate the arson, killings and the destruction of property at the local government council headquarters in River State. Guys, this Nyeson Wike is behaving like, like a second god in River State, like a mini-god. It seems that after God and after Jesus Christ is near some week because why is he stressing over this panel of inquiry? Why is he stressing over it? Was it what in fact how does it concern him in the first place? It doesn't concern him. Since he claims that uh, he, he doesn't have hand in, in the violence in River State and push the blame to Fubara. So why is he concerned over this thing? Why is he concerned? Because at this point. He is struggling so much to make sure he gets his hands on, on, a, on, on the structures of, 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 of rivers. And if you see the way Wike is now, you would think this man is, is, is about 85 years. Wike is just 50-something years, but he's looking like an old man. Wike that is just 50-something, approaching 60. Wike is looking like someone that has already clocked 90. Because of the stress of making sure that he gains the structures of River State. Ever since Wike stepped down from power as governor, Wike has not remained the same. Wike has been getting leaner, thinner, dry. If you see Wike with his crooked voice, you would think this man is, is, is already 90-something. Even Tinibu is looking way more fresh than Wike. Wike was far more fresh when he was governor. Well, ever since he started mingling himself with the APC and doing what he's doing, Wiki has really changed a lot. Wiki has changed completely. This is not the Wiki we once knew when he was governor. Wiki has changed. Power has changed in Wiki. The quest for power, the taste for power, the pursuit for power. It has changed him. Look at how he is. Someone that is so drunk for power. But... I know at the end of the day, men will be men. We are all humans. All these things that Wike is dragging, he wants to grab power for himself. He wants to gain the structures. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. He will not take all these things to the grave. Oh. He should note that human life is fragile. Anything can happen within a twinkle of an eye. And once you close your eyes, it, that is the end. 
all these struggles, all these things you are fighting, fight this one, fight that one, fight this one, you will not take it to the grave. That is what Mwike should know, that he is a human, he is not a god. He cannot live forever. So he should not. What legacies does Mwike want to leave behind? Is this the kind of legacy he wants to leave behind? That when he leaves this earth, people will remember him as an emperor. Once a, a, a politician that wanted to drain rivers people. Is this how he wants to leave his legacies? Is this how he wants people to remember him with? Because this life is fragile. Oh. Once life can be taken away at any given point in time, regardless of who you are, it doesn't matter. Death does not look anybody at the face. So we should consider all these things and note that all these things are just vanity. Because at the end of the day, you will leave all these things behind. Winke will not take river structures to the grave. He won't. So what is the point of fighting? Why is he fighting all these things? Because of what? So that Tini will praise him and say, Oh, well done. You are doing very well. And at the end of the day, give him greater appointment and all of that. Does it matter? Does it really matter? It doesn't really matter. It only matters here while you are alive. Once you close your eye, bam, it is all over. So Mwike should take all these things into consideration before trying to, you know, do as if he is God. He's not God though. Because at some point, at some point, he's only rubbishing himself. He thinks he is wise. He thinks he's rubbishing Fubara. No. He's tarnishing his image. Mwike wasn't like this before. I mean, we all praised Mwike. For his deeds, his actions, how he fought against, you know, Buara and all of that. When they were trying to oppress him. Mwike was not known to be an oppressor. But now he is the oppressor. Mwike fought against his oppressors. Now he is now an oppressor. It is not the way to go. Had it been Nigeria, you know, is, it was indeed a good country. All these things wouldn't have been happening. The president would have summoned all of them. Those found guilty would face consequences for their actions. But because... Mr. President is somehow biased and it is noticeable to all. Nobody can deny it. Else, why hasn't Tinibu called Mwike to order and said, my boy, sit down. Remove your hands in Rivers affairs and leave Rivers for Fubara so that Fubara can rule. No, because Tinibu is interested in Rivers. That's why. Now, Mwike is saying that uh, he will make sure you know, he's trying to prevent the prosecution of his loyalists. Because every finger is pointing at Mike that those are his loyalists. Because when they were at those secretariats, burning the secretariat, they were shouting on Mike's mandate, we shall stand. Mike, or if no be Mike, no be another person. If you no be Mike, no be another person. So meaning uh, River State has two governor, Mike and uh, Fubara. You see how everything is going. So it will be, it, it's obvious. Because Mwike did not deny all these things. He did not deny it now. He did not deny that those guys were calling out his name. They were, you know, chanting his name while perpetrating those violence in rivers. He never denied it. So why is he trying to prevent the prosecution of those persons? So that they walk scot free with what, after, after everything they've done, this is bad. Mwike is being biased. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? I'm dropping here. 